Hey everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and the last time we came down here, last couple times we came down here, uh, on each occasion we've had something fairly significant to take care of. One of which, uh, the most recent visit yesterday, was to harvest a couple of my oldest bins and to get all the castings out and to relaunch the uh, new uh, bin into which the worms all got uh, cast free into again to start afresh. So that was a pretty involved day and then uh, even previously to that um, I had launched off, relocated my two pink pots that had the uh, African and the European night crawlers in them into the two new vermi bag setups and all of the work that went into setting up the vermi bags and building their frames. So today it's a little bit more of a simple relaxing uh, feed a couple bins sort of a setup. So today it's over to these two bins over here that are uh, on the edge of the shelf. One of them is dated September 30th. And that one's uh, 15 days old at this point. And the other one over there is dated September 13th. And that's 32 days old at this point. So they're both fairly new bins. But the last time I fed these, I do remember people commenting about, oh my goodness, you're putting so much food in there. But then I tried to, you know, uh, respond to those comments by saying, you know, you've, <laughs> you've obviously not seen how many worms are in these bins. You know, go back and see when those bins were built and launched and you'll see how many worms there were in them. So um, we've got fairly hungry bins usually. You know, I usually launch my bins with a plethora of worms, which means I'm usually not too bashful about giving them large quantities of food. So we'll see how they did consuming that last uh, feeding, which was eight days ago at this point. So why don't we get the bins up here onto the bench and uh, and see how they're coming along. I guess we'll start with the older of the bins, um, the September 13th one, 32 days old. Then we'll move on to the newer of the two. The feeding that I've got for today consists of your basic kitchen scraps, um, all different types of cuttings from the kitchen, cucumbers, carrots, cabbage, you name it. Let's dig into this bin and see how things look. I do see a little bit of a depression going down through the middle here and the coffee filter that we saw here a moment ago was just an indicator of where the last feeding occurred which was right down the middle. As we start peeling the material back what we see beneath is fairly nice looking um, rich dark colored castings. The whole bin has a nice fresh earthy smell to it. I can't recall exactly what kind of food we fed to these guys last time. So I guess we'll see as we start to dig down um, whether or not they've depleted it all and if they've left any behind we might be able to tell what it was they got last time. So let's see what we can see as we peel back what's covering the feeding zone. This is just maybe a chunk of coffee. Here's some bits of cardboard, bedding type materials. So far I'm not seeing too many signs of anything that might be food. Although this is kind of a stringy something, maybe a piece of celery or something. It's hard to tell. I am seeing a fair number of worms, that's for certain. This is just a little stick I'm breaking into smaller chunks in the hopes that it might eventually get broken down by the worms. I don't really see anything, which is kind of what I expected. I mean, I, uh, I already know from experience that I've got so many worms in my bins that I give them a good hearty feeding and a week later I typically don't expect to see much, if any, of the food I gave them previously. That is, of course, unless I've given them something that's kind of a slow composting 
type of a food item which is expected to take a long time to break down but I don't recall that being the case last time pretty sure what they would have received last time would have been mostly soft easy to eat stuff and I believe that that's kind of what we're seeing here um, this is one little fragment of food which I do believe I recognize it looks like the um, looks like the stem of a banana peel but as you can see the banana peel itself is more or less gone and even the stem itself is um, very soft and is already occupied on the inside by worms who are making a making a meal out of it so I'm sure it won't last much longer that to me appears to be the only um, recognizable piece of leftover food from the last feeding which is pretty decent unless this might be another thing yeah this is the only other thing I see that's recognizable but it's just a paper thin sheet of a uh, um, skin from the cantaloupe rind it's got that distinct kind of weird outer surface to it so that's a that's a pretty good job good job on these uh, on these foods that the worms have done away with for the most part so I'm glad to see that I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, clear a little bit of a opening down here on the bottom so we can add a little bit more food um, down here before we drop in the food why don't we uh, just give it a handful a little sprinkling of leaves a little bit of a sort of a bedding type material down below and then the foods that we can give them are pretty much more of the same that they got last time so here we have another banana peel for them and another stem that might take a little bit longer but not much longer for them to eat it's a fairly nice piece of a uh, cabbage purple cabbage and here's some stuff that looks like it might have been the makings of a salad with some lettuce cucumber tomato stuff like that so that's a pretty decent assortment of foods for them and another thing that I usually like to include in my feedings is uh, the coffee grounds I've got a pretty good size amount of them here uh, I'll just go ahead and I'll give them half of what's in this container it's a pretty generous amount but I have a feeling that they're gonna do pretty good eating it up and it does seem like um, a generous portion of grit with each feeding also seems to encourage um, quick consumption of the food too. So I'm becoming much more of a generous uh, feeder of grit, eggshell grit, to go along with the food because um, it does really seem to help with the breakdown of the food. So. I think we did a I think we did pretty good here giving these guys a nice generous feeding and it did seem like it was due because I didn't see much left from the previous feeding so uh, yeah you know if you're uh, if you're watching my feedings and you're thinking I might be going a little bit overboard on what I give them um, this is evidence to show that these worms can handle it they can definitely dig into what they're being given and and uh, and devour it pretty quickly so the uncomposted leaves that you normally see on the tops of my newer containers are usually there for me to see how things are progressing I kind of use the leaf or the remnants of what was a thorough covering of leaves from the beginning as just an overall indication of how things are progressing in the bin and I mean for a one month old bin 32 days old this bins really coming along kind of nice I must say so let's get things restored to the way we found them before we got here. I'm just going to try to clean off some of this leaf matter that's stuck to the newspaper. And we'll just put the marker back here to indicate that the feeding was right down the middle, as it usually is in my newer bins. It's only on my older bins that I usually start to get into the horizontal feeding patterns. Okay, the September 13th bin is fed. Let's get the other one. Yep, this is the September 30th bin. 
This is the one that's only 15 days old at this point. And I guess, like I mentioned earlier, a pretty good telltale of that is the fairly thorough covering of still leaves on top, as opposed to leaves mingled together with a lot of finished castings. I um, guess we've got some little bits of growth occurring here within the bin, which is pretty normal. You'll often see that happening. So we're going to try to push all these leaves off to the side so we can use them at the end to restore the cover over the top, the way I like to do. Sometimes in my small, smaller bins, I'll simply take this leaf cover and pull it out just so that I can, you know, do the business of feeding the bin uh, without being obstructed by the leaves. You can already see a pretty good jumble of worms hanging out right here beneath the surface. So let's start pushing back here. I'm not sure what was going on right here, but we've really got a lot of worms happening here. I can't remember if it's only because we might have launched this bin with a huge number of worms, which is possible. It definitely uh, matches my MO. I do feel like I'm seeing a lot more worms here than we did in the other bin. But a peculiar observation is that there is a pretty good sized piece of banana peel here. A fairly recognizable chunk of food. Um, some other chunk of food that I don't recognize. I really wasn't expecting just to be able to observe, you know, good sized chunks of leftover food in here, considering the, the large population. And I don't know, I, mean, I can't remember, maybe I just fed more into this bin in the last go around or, or what. Not sure what the explanation is. Here too, another, uh, banana peel that still has a way to go before it gets consumed. Um, this is cardboard. This appears to be some sort of a fruit or vegetable. It's hard to say. More cardboard. So I mean that's the one interesting thing about vermicomposting is that you don't always get what you expect. You know, Sometimes you expect that you're going to see one thing and then you get an entirely different thing when you finally get down into the bin and start looking around. But one thing we are definitely noticing here in this bin, and maybe it's only because I didn't dig too deep into the other bin, but this bin definitely seems like it's got a huge number of worms in it. Um, possibly attestable to the fact that I might have actually just launched a huge number of worms. But they're doing a, a really nice job, a lot of beautiful castings all around the feeding zone. So, um, here's another banana peel. Pretty good, pretty good portion remaining from the last feeding. But that's usually not enough to deter me. Um, I'm usually intent on backfilling the food supply on a pretty regular basis, even when it doesn't appear to be needed. So uh, I am going to go ahead and feed as planned. And what we'll do is we'll just scatter in the remainder of these leaves that I've got here. Not too many, but we'll drop it in anyway. Almost serving as a little bit of a bedding, but perhaps more as a buffer just to prevent any worms right there on the surface from getting um, a piece of frozen food placed right on top of them. <laughs> That's really probably the main reason I'm doing that. Um, now here we have what appears to be part of a cauliflower, the stem of a cauliflower head. This looks to be a little bit more of that purple cabbage. I have another banana peel, so let's give them that too. And then here is a piece of paper, which they'll usually eat as well, so I'm just throwing that in there too. And we got some, uh, I guess, regular orange carrots and some white carrots, probably used to make a soup. This looks like the sort of veggies that I'm typically getting from my mom. The purple cabbage, the soup greens. So I think for now that should do. Should be good for another week or so. Um, because don't forget on top of this we're also still going to add the remainder of what's caught what coffee is left in this container here. So let's get that in. Pretty decent amount. Also carrying with it a fair amount of moisture it seems. 
And then like we did before, we're going to coat the top of the feeding with a nice generous helping of grit. It's almost like giving the worms the utensils they need to eat their meal as opposed to just giving them the food and then having them wonder how am I, how am I going to eat this without a utensil. <laughs> Is that a realistic analogy? Does that make sense? Whatever. All right, so I like what I'm seeing here. Pretty good results for a fairly new bin that's still only about two weeks old. It's probably still only on maybe its second feeding, possibly third feeding, I don't recall. But since it is still pretty new, I am going to try to preserve this leaf cover to be an indicator of, uh, of the fact that it is still a fairly new bin. So as we start scattering some of the old composted material from previous times on top of the feeding zone, I'm going to try to leave the fresh leaves off on the sides to leave those for last so we can scatter those over the top of the entire setup. So that's it for today. There really isn't a whole lot to be done uh, other than just, you know, covering things up here and getting the bin back up on the shelf. So I'll take care of uh, I'll take care of washing stuff such as the uh, the food container and my gloves and whatnot. But I'm going to get this thing up on the shelf and uh, and call it a day, at least for vermicomposting for the day. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, then remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. Also consider subscribing to the channel. That's always really appreciated as well. And also leave a comment down in the comment section if you have any questions or just want to say something. Always glad to hear your thoughts. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye now.